Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at North Congregational Church on this, the third Sunday of Advent. How did that happen, friends? This week, my mind was blown by the fact that uh, all of a sudden we are here, this time in our Advent season, uh, on the day when we light the candle of joy, the pink candle. And I remember here in this very sanctuary not that long ago, um, not during the Advent season, but during a time, an ordinary time, where I passed out uh, pink candles to all of you, reminding you that the joy of the Lord is your strength. We are reminded today during this Advent season, but the pink candle reminds us uh, that we are always, always recipients of God's joy in the midst of our challenging times. And so this week, we return to the Gospel of Luke. During this uh, time, during this account, uh, it is as though it was written in two acts. The Gospel biography of Jesus, and then the story of the early church, the Jesus community. What's important about Luke's writing of these times is that whether you were a Jew or a Gentile, Luke was speaking to you. And in those days, deciding to become a part of this early Christian movement, which at the time was illegal, could bring about punishment for your allegiance. Surely the message in Luke is that the downcast, the lowly, the oppressed, would rise up in a welcome and inspirational account. Like the Jewish exiled people of Isaiah's time and like the early Christians, we also sometimes wonder where God is in our suffering and particularly during this challenging pandemic. We long to hear the promise that a reason for joyful praise is the good news. The good news is on its way. The words of the verse of our theme song for this series this week is, We believe in God. We believe in God, even when God is silent. Friends, let's join together in prayer. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depths of joy. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are not sure of your presence, ignite the flame of joy within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. We believe in you, God. We believe in you, God, even when you seem silent. Help us face the silence of unknowing and embrace it as a pregnant pause before the joyful new beginnings that await us. Amen. And friends now, again this week, we are blessed by the beautiful music of our NCC virtual choir singing the first verse of Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. And again, we thank all of you who have participated in our choir and also Andrew Katz, uh, who took the time to put it together for us. May you be blessed in the glory of this Christmas carol. Please sing along.
welcome Katie Ward and Deb Beaton to bring forward our Advent light and to share in the lighting of our Advent candles. Joy, the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah of the Lord, the Gospel of Luke. This candle symbolizes the light of joy. Joy is not the same as happiness, which may seem elusive in a time of loss. Joy is the deep river of assurance that it is always there for us to dip into in spite of circumstances. Joy is not about denying suffering, but rather it is the embracing of the depth of all of life's emotions that is the very thing that allows us to eventually feel the heights once more. The shepherds were very afraid when angels appeared, and so they encouraged them, after they got over the shock, to rejoice because a baby has been born that would change hearts and help us find a better way. Now, because it is the third Sunday of Advent, uh, it is important for us to be surrounded by the music of the season. And we are blessed this week by the United Church of Christ uh, that is offered us uh, from musicians around the country, uh, different video recordings of uh, hymns. And so I share with you now, Angels We Have Heard on High. Oh.
And now, friends, may your heart be opened to our reading from Scripture this morning. Katie and Deb Beaton will read from the Gospel of Luke. Reading from Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, 26 through 38. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us, by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who has said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The second reading is Luke, book 1, verses 45 through 56. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God, may the words of our hearts, the meditations of our very beings, be acceptable to you, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, as I said this week, uh, we have lit our third Advent candle, the pink candle, the flame of joy. And as I you know, sort of shook my head and said, how did we get to the third Sunday of Advent? 
uh, so quickly in this unusual time. Uh, when I saw it with that reality, I uh, was profoundly moved that for me, the events of this week illustrate deeply the waiting of Advent, the profound and painful and continued realities of the pandemic juxtaposed with the new presence and possibility of a COVID-19 vaccine. At the most tragic point in this plague, the most daily infections and deaths, we sit and we wait in hope for healing. And my prayer is that in the midst of it all, we can feel a glimmer of possibility, a glimmer of joy. Friends, this is the Advent story. This is our story. This is the good news. I'm so grateful to uh, the work of Worship Design Studio and the theme material because it has taken me and us to a deeper place in our understanding of how the music of the season can lift us out, can help us to resist the darkening days and the darkness of uh, spirit, the challenges of our time. And so we continue to look to music, particularly to Mary's song uh, entitled The Magnificat, uh, as well as the music of our times. So first we turn to Luke's story this week. Luke is a journalist, and this is the longest, uh, most verbose gospel of the four that details the events of Jesus's birth in a way that helps us understand who Jesus really is. And it also helps the non-Jews, the Gentiles, get the information the facts, more than just the rumors, that they can also see Jesus' saving presence for them as well. And to insert in that, for the new fledgling Christian communities to hear, Mary's Magnificat would have read like a rallying protest speech calling for justice and putting powerful words in the mouth of a self-proclaimed servant of God. Some in those early communities would have heard their own occupation reflected in the word from Mary. Joy, deep human thriving can happen in the midst of oppression when people are inspired to raise their voice, to raise up to their full height, and to proclaim their worth. Our hymn of resistance this week is entitled Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And this week I had the opportunity to watch a documentary entitled Following the Ninth. Because we know that Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee is originally about a musical piece written by Beethoven. I did not know that throughout history it had had such intense inspirational power for people. It is so powerfully connected with the theme of joy, particularly the section in Beethoven's Ninth entitled The Ode to Joy. I had no idea that this piece of music had been so intertwined with movements for peace and justice and freedom, particularly in Tiananmen Square and East Berlin and Chile, and also during times of intense human tragedy, like Japan's tsunami. I would be surprised, friends, if you can ever hum the tune in the same way again after watching this film. I want to just read a quote from uh, the website of this film. Following the Ninth is a documentary film about a, the global impact of Beethoven's final symphony. 
The film released in the mid-2013 uh, was screened in over 250 countries and around the world. Written in 1824, near the end of Beethoven's life, and this is amazing, the Ninth Symphony was composed by a man with little to be thankful for. He was sick, he was alienated from most everyone, and he was completely deaf. Beethoven had never imagined, uh, had never managed to find love nor create a family as he always wanted. And yet, despite this, he managed to create an anthem of joy that embraces the transcendence of beauty over suffering. Celebrated to this day for its ability to heal, repair, and bring people together across the divides, the ninth has become an anthem for liberation and hope that has inspired many around the world. At Tiananmen Square in 1898, the students played Beethoven's Ninth Symphony over the loudspeakers so that that music would be louder uh, than the propaganda coming from, um, coming from the army uh, that were there to crush their struggle for freedom. In Chile, uh, women living under the Pinochet dictatorship sang the night, Ninth Symphony, toward torture prisons, sang it toward the prisons so that men inside could take hope when they heard their voices. When the Berlin Wall came down in December of 1989, it collapsed to the sound of Leonard Bernstein conducting Beethoven's Ninth as though it was an ode to freedom. And in Japan, the Ninth Symphony is performed hundreds of times, often with over 10,000 people singing in the chorus. Uh, and particularly, this was sung and experienced, and it had heightened importance uh, in the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami in 2011. In the beginning of this film, we have a modern day Magnificat. It features Billy Bragg, a British punk rocker who sees himself as the common man. He's a self-trained musician, and he once wrote an alternative translation of the original German chorus. He wrote it for a school teacher to teach the children in her classroom, and it soon became a popular anthem, even being performed for the queen. In these words, you can hear the call to resist division, to raise your voices and furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred for good. These words are a Magnificat for our day. Hear the words by Billy Bragg. See now like a phoenix rising from the rubble of the war, hope of ages manifested peace and freedom evermore. Brothers, sisters, stand together, raise your voices now as one though by history divided, reconciled in unison. Throw off now the chains of ancient bitterness and enmity, and in hand let's walk together on the path of liberty. Hark, a new dawn is breaking. Raise your voices now as one, though by history divided, reconciled in unison. What to be then, all my brothers, sisters, what is in your hearts? Tell me now the hopes you harbor. What's the task and where to start? Those 10 million voices, every word is understood. Furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred with good. In the Gospel of Luke, out of the darkness of her experience, Mary found words of promise and joy and possibility. Beethoven, near the end of his life, sick and alienated from everyone, death created an anthem of joy 
that continues to inspire out of the depth of his suffering. We see how that song has offered hope during difficult times in the past, and I know it can offer hope and even joy now. At this time in our history, we are at an advent of a new beginning, and yet to get there, we need to wait. We need to be patient, and we need to allow ourselves to be touched by God's joy in spite of it all. And now, friends, hear the children sing and sing along with them to our Advent hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. joyful we adore thee god of glory god of love let us just sink into that moment of joy breathe in that joy and that hope and that comfort as we enter into a time of silent prayer Loving God, on this third Sunday of Advent, when the days are darkening and hastening on, we see glimmers of hope and promise of a new tomorrow. Yet we are now in this moment of waiting. God, you say that it is always darkest before the dawn of this Advent day. It is true. And so we wait. As Paul said, give thanks in all circumstances, rejoice in the Lord always. Even in this time of darkness and waiting, we offer you thanks 
We rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice in you. And again, we say, rejoice. But we also come to you to lift up to you our prayers, our concerns, our sadness, our despair, our darkness, our hopelessness, so that our burden might be lightened, lifted, eased. We know that you know our hearts before the words are spoken from our lips. You know our needs. You know our desires. You know our greatest fears. Hear them, hold them, tend them. Be with us all as we wait as we wait to see the power and possibility of your presence, as we wait for the power and possibility of hope and healing, as we wait for all the ways that you are calling us to give birth to your son even now in this world, giving birth to love and hope and care and joy. Joy. Hear us, O oh God, as we pray the prayer your son taught us to pray, our Savior and Lord, born in a dark and smelly manger. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, friends, I just would like to uh, offer a reminder to you about uh, the life and the mission and ministry of North Congregational Church continues, even during these times of pandemic. Uh, God, I, we just uh, invite you to uh, keep your eye on our Facebook page and our web page uh, and your email uh, so that you can know how it is that you can continue to support the mission and ministry of North Congregational Church, how you can participate uh, in our activities virtually um, and how you can feel connected through our online coffee and conversations. Um, and also, we invite you now to consider uh, how you can uh, give to North Congregational Church. Normally on a Sunday morning, we'd have a nice song and we'd walk around and we would uh, uh, collect the morning offering. Uh, but that's not possible right now, although we do hope and pray that it will be possible soon. But we invite you to consider now giving to the church, knowing that you can mail it to North Congregational Church, Box 1209, Middleborough, Massachusetts, 02346. You can go to our webpage, www.northcongregationalchurch.com, uh, find the PayPal link, click it, and follow the instructions, or you can Venmo directly uh, to our uh, assistant treasurer, Gordon Cass, uh, through your Venmo account at Gordon Dash Cass. We just ask that God will bless the gifts that we've already received and those that we will receive to multiply them and use them uh, for the continued work of this church in our community and in all the world. And now, friends, I share with you our words of benediction, and I invite you, after I share these words, to, um, to rest in the beautiful song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Friends, we wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that God is ever present with us, 
Fill the night left by sadness with messages of joy. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that joy alive in you and that spur you on in your work for justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Amen and amen. And now friends, go out, let your light and your joy and your love shine, let it shine, let it shine. Where?